The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. We are here in Austin, Texas for the Freescale Technology Forum. Let's take a look around. Amazing hacks. How can we make this portable? Inspired designs. I am the internet troll. Regrettable acting. Bat them hatches! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So you appear to be the chef of this operation. Yes, thank you. What is the deal with this microwave that has everyone buzzing? So what we're doing here is we're using solid state RF technology in the same way that you might build a multi-beam, uh, multi-antenna beam forming system. Only instead of sending it to a cell phone as a way of localizing the signal and sending multiple hundreds of megabits over the air, we're using it to localize how you transmit energy inside an oven. So that way, using those same types of beamforming techniques by adjusting the frequency phase uh, amplitude of each of the signals we're able to localize where we send energy and unlike a cell phone which knows how to respond meat doesn't respond but there's a characteristic RF signature whether you're sending it to a protein a starch or a fat or some of the other components in the meal that way we can put multiple things for example, here, I'm going to put into the oven meat, different types of vegetables. And you can aim the beam at different areas and exactly. different frequencies. And, that, and I don't know exactly where I am in space, but I don't care. All I need to care is that in a particular point in space, I'm getting no response, therefore it's air. Another place, I'm getting a signature that tells me it's a protein, etc. So historically, this technology has already been deployed in the hospitality, in the uh, restaurant industry, where, for example, room service. Hotels hate room service because keeping a full kitchen there, fully staffed, yeah. especially with someone who knows anything about food, that's a really tough thing to do logistically. Right. So there, this is already being deployed as a way of having food service in places where you want more than you know, a microwave and a frozen dinner. Awesome. And it comes out, it's actually a grade that you want to actually serve to a customer. So you stick this whole thing in and it also that's where your samples are being derived from. Exactly. All right, this just came out of the oven. I'm gonna give it a try. Okay, so this is the car that was designed to help an injured IndyCar driver uh, drive again. The idea is he can drive with head motions and a sip and puff controller. And they have a simulation here where you can wear the equipment and try to drive a video game car the same way this car would be driven. Okay, Adam here is ahead of me in line. You excited? Uh, very much. Could you tilt your head down and take a look at this thing before we start? Okay, it looks like the Freescale Freedom platform with about two shields stacked onto some sort of base unit along with lithium ion battery. Okay, how does it work? Uh, we're using the uh, combination magnometer gyro, uh, gyro part along with uh, the accelerometer. And then uh, we have the board on mounted on the hat and then there's a separate board down there as a reference. And so we're just measuring the difference that his head turns from that reference. Okay. And we take that information and there's another K64 board that's just programmed up as a joystick. So in the, uh, in, the, in the prototype car, there'd be the reference board, so even if the car yeah. is at a different inclination, it'd be your head's reference inside the car exactly. rather than the yep. first yeah. gravity. Exactly. Awesome. Well, I look forward to trying it out. <laughs> what makes you the best hospital bed ever created? I think we need to find a representative. Can you tell us about your Stryker hospital bed? Sure, this Stryker bed is uh, primarily designed to be used in the intensive care unit, uh, and it's powered by our iDotM X53 um, microprocessor. Uh, we're also in the next generation bed that will be used uh, by Stryker as well, 
that will have uh, three new IDOTM X6 processors. It will also have uh, six Kinetis microcontrollers and four pressure sensors. Why put a microcontroller into a hospital bed? So the microcontrollers will be used primarily for uh, the motor control. So as you can see, uh, this striker bed has a variety of different positions that it can be uh, put into. So what it does is that each individual microcontroller is using uh, or powering each motor uh, to, to move it. All right, well, thanks for showing us. No problem, thank you. This looks like the device from the keynote this morning? Yes, this is, this is the device from the keynote this morning, but we put it on a Freedom Board footprint. Awesome. Yeah, that seems like it'd be a little bit easier for development. Well, and, and, and the people are excited about this. They see this, and I'll tell you what, everyone wants a piece of this module, but the other half of the people, they want this board. They want to know where they can get the board from, when can they have it. I had one guy ask me, if I can't get the board, can I at least get the schematic so I can build my own? Oh, yeah, that sounds easy. <laughs> And anyone can do it. That's what we enable. This looks like, it kind of reminds me of the BeagleBone Black looking at it. I so don't it's have a Freescale version. It's a Freescale okay. version. It's got the Arduino headers. Yep, plus expansion plus on the inside. Plus some expansion. There's not a smaller board that's as powerful with that many features out there. Go look at the PC Duino. Go look at the Udo. Go look at the Edison. We beat all of them. Does this uh, boot from the SD? Boots? No, we got the kernel into the... In into the really? Flash. All the flash is on there? And the SD card just has the file system. Oh my gosh, that's insane. That makes sense because then you're not rewriting the SD card with a finite write cycle. Awesome, I'll have to look into this. So yes. this is the IMX6D? This is the I SCM I.MX6D. All right, well, I look forward to trying one out. Hey, good luck, guys. We're out on the streets of Austin, Texas, and we're gonna check out the Freescale Internet of Tomorrow truck. Let's see what's inside. So what is this thing? This is Thalmic Labs Mio. It came out of a university in Canada, and it's a myoelectric sensor. These are these are pickups that are gonna sense your, your muscle groups. And oh. when you put it on, you can see the, the all eight readings are going crazy. Um, and it, what it can do is I'll sync it, and now it, can can pick up my gestures, different gestures that I make, mm -hmm. like going left and right, uh, double tapping, and in, it also has an accelerometer and gyro in it. So it's, this is kind of like Minority Report or or one of those movies where you can um, grab something. I got a laser pointer now. Oh, um, well, you know, you could use this if uh, if you didn't have a if you only had your forearm. Yeah, that's. That, we've had a lot of conversations about that, you know, either on a leg or on, on up, even on a bicep. The the myoelectric sensors would still pick up fine. Right, because you're still trying to move those things. Yeah. Even and if it's you don't. more just the interpretation of what the data is that's coming off of it. So, so you, could, you could create a profile and that could make a robotic hand move the finger. Yeah. So you could hook it up to a person who still has their hand, get all the samples off of it, then map it to yeah, someone that, that doesn't really have that. Yeah, that would be really cool. So it would be like a so real phantom limb. Nah, we should you definitely should, do that. I, I would totally do yeah. that with a project. <laughs> I'm, I'm all into that. I do all sorts of accessibility stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so that yeah. would be awesome. Uh, we could, yeah, we could drive it with one of the other little boards. It's cool. Uh, so you have, you have a cars dashboard here, it looks like. Yeah, this is one of our mid-level cluster reference designs. And it uses a special part that's built for automotive use to give you graphics and drive the... These gauges are actually driven by little stepper motors. Okay. It's been the standard a long time. So you're driving video and you have motor control That's in the same right. part. And there's another demo that also shows that heads up display and it warps the image so that it oh, matches the curvature of the yeah, windshield. Yeah, I get it. But so it projects a warped image so it appears yeah, straight. Right. Yeah, right. And there's this the other new family though that goes along with it, and it's really pretty cool. It's built for automotive, but it's yeah. really cool and industrial, is this Magna V family. Mm -hmm. And they have high voltage in the single chip. So you got a, a low voltage microcontroller but high voltage electronics around it in a single chip. A voltage regulator, a 12 volt voltage regulator. In uh, the chip? In the chip. 
it's it's specialized. I mean, it's built for a car so that you can basically plug it into a car power supply, and then it'll have a can. And that's a pretty dirty power supply in a car. Yeah, and literally like one capacitor, one diode, and you're running. Oh, Magna V. Yeah, that's, and then I should look have, into that. Yeah, it's got CAN bus, and the CAN so bus. So it must have five. really robust ESD protection uh, yeah, as well. Yeah, it is. It is. And the CAN bus makes sense for cars. Totally bulletproof. So this company actually makes uh, the same dashboard for this Lamborghini Huracan. So they've got really slick European style gauges, and that's one single IMX processor. It's doing both of all of it. Yeah, it so connects to your cell phone, has GPS, has maps. It has this thing called um, uh, Mirror Link, so you can play video or, or, or multimedia from your phone, and it runs a whole. Um, uh, Oh, it looks like you have a dual LVDS Yeah, it'll draw, connector. Yeah, it'll draw. This one's an, uh, an HDMI monitor, but it drives this LCD glass directly. And it'll okay. drive both of them. The, yeah. Very cool. That's, it is pretty neat. Okay, what do you got over here? So, things that are really cool always have sensors, right? We have, we make an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a magnetometer. All in one? Well, two chips. And okay. there's some benefits to having two chips, but they're pretty technical. It has to do with noise between the two parts. But anyway, it's good to have two separate chips. So here is the accelerometer and, and magnetometer in one part, and the gyros in a second part. And remember, this is currently the lowest power gyro in the world. OK. Um, but those two chips are dirt cheap. You can build an IMU, or inertial measurement unit, with it. And then you can tell whatever it is you're putting it into, what direction it's pointing, how fast it's going, what if it's going what direction north or anything, it's how fast it's turning. So there's so many cool things you can make. And this oh, this is reacting to the tablet, or right. well, the tablet is reacting to this. Yeah, it's just sending its position over. And it we have a software, open source software called Sensor Fusion that takes the acceleration, the gyro, and the magnetometer and gives you this really smooth position information back. So you don't have to worry about all the PID stuff. You just yeah. Yeah. I, I noticed that with your motor controllers as well. You had a lot of solutions that helped people yeah. develop it. Yeah, and motor motor controls are surprisingly difficult. This must be low power. It's running off that really super dinky yeah. lipo. It it is. Yeah, it is. Cool. So we could. That's a perfect thing for building into a drone. For example, we just stuck this on Whoa, here. To give people it, on is it autonomous? Because I think a drone should be autonomous. It could I, be. I think. We. Uh, Otherwise, a, it's an unmanned vehicle. Unmanned. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, we showed you one earlier that was autonomous. It was a robotic yes. drone. This is an unmanned vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> I always see it in the news. Yeah. It's like if there's, some, right. if there's someone in the Navy right. flying it, it's a robot. I'll tell you what's cool about <laughs> Sorry, this. Sorry, it's just like my pet beef. Uh, no, I'm not I holding understand. against you. I'm, just, I'm holding it against the world. Well, this is the newer newer model. It's that kind of the uh, empty shell they sent us for, right. from 3D it Robotics. It looks really slick. And it, it'll actually do, it's a more like a flying camera. And you can say, I want a super cool. Has a camera built into it? Yeah, that, well, it hangs off the front. Oh, mounts. so you put like a GoPro or something yep. on it. Yeah. And, um, It'll do like a super cool 360 view of a building. You can, you can kind of set, tell it to do these right. cinema, cinema, cinema graphics. Just don't take shots. the video for money, otherwise the FCC right. or who comes after you now, the FFA? There's some, some rules that need to be looked at. I That's going to torpedo independent filmmaking, the use of drones. <laughs> yeah. OK, Ian, I know you've had a really long day, but thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Appreciate it, Ben. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us for this exploration of the Freescale Technology Forum in Austin, Texas. Remember, you can log on to element14.com to read about all of our upcoming special events, episodes, and so much more. We'll see you next time. There are several levels, literally, of events here at the event. Um, yeah. Is that for signing all the autographs? I need it back. For you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> to read about all our upcoming events, projects, and special occasions. Special occasions like Christmas. Is it going to burn me? Only <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going into the technology lab. It's also the uh, open bar lab, as you can tell. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.